Can you believe that something new in basic mathematics has been discovered just recently? We now have a new, easier method to solve quadratic equations using only formulas that have, respectively, been known for hundreds or thousands of years. This method was introduced on 13 October 2019 by an American mathematician named Po Shen Lo on his website. The big breakthrough here is the order in which the calculations take place. In this video, we get straight to a few examples to show how much easier this method works, and then we'll consider the background and why it works so well in a future video. The standard quadratic equation is given by ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Note that we could divide the entire equation by a unequal to 0 to change the first coefficient to 1. But to compare the new method with the formula in general used today, which contains a, we keep it like this for now. For almost 1400 years, the two roots to this equation have been obtained by applying this formula. It has to be remembered, as is the case in many schools, except if it would be made available. Let's take as first example x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0, where a equals 1, b equals minus 6, and c equals 8. If we apply the familiar formula, we get x equals minus minus 6, plus or minus the square root of minus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8, everything divided by 2 times 1. We rewrite this as 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 divided by 2, and consequently 6 plus or minus 2 divided by 2. This gives us the two roots x equals 6 plus 2 over 2 equals 4 or 6 minus 2 divided by 2 equals 2. And we can therefore rewrite the quadratic equation as x minus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. We can confirm that 4 times 2 equals 8 and 4 plus 2 equals 6 which becomes minus 6 since the signs in the brackets are negative. Another method currently in use which does not require the formula is to search for integer factors r and s of c divided by a that, when added together, gives minus b over a. For 8 we can test 8 times 1 and 4 times 2, and we see that 4 plus 2 gives us the required 6. But it's not always that easy to test all the factors of c over a. What about the quadratic equation x squared minus 20x plus 64 equals 0? It is now more difficult to see that the roots are 16 and 4, since 16 times 4 equals 64 and 16 plus 4 equals 20. But you could always still apply the long formula to get the answer. And sometimes the answers aren't even real numbers. Since square roots of negative numbers start playing their part, it becomes increasingly difficult to identify the specific case involved. Applying the new method, we could obtain the first example's roots by first squaring minus b over 2a and then subtracting c over a. This gives us 6 over 2 squared, or 3 squared, which is 9, from which we subtract 8 over 1 equals 8 to give us 1. We now take the square roots of 1 and add them to the minus b over 2a. The square roots of 1 are plus 1 and minus 1, so the roots of the quadratic equation becomes 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1, or 4 and 2. This may not seem like an easier method than the previous integer factor method, but when the equations get more complex, it will become clear how much easier this method makes it. For the second example, we take the square of minus b over 2a as 10 squared or 100. We subtract 64 to give us 36, the square roots of which are plus 6 and minus 6. We add these to the minus b over 2a equals 10 and get 16 and 4. This wasn't really more difficult to apply than the first example. The numbers were just a bit larger. But look what happens when the quadratic equation becomes more complex. If you try to solve x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 0, you won't find integer factors of 6 that add up to 4. Neither 1 times 6 nor 2 times 3 works. With the old method, you would have to pull that long formula closer. With the new method, you still do exactly what you did for the two easier examples. You take minus b over 2a equals 4 over 2, or 2, square it to get 4, and subtract 6 to give you minus 2. You now take the square root of minus 2, which is plus or minus i times square root of 2. 
And the answer is therefore 2 plus i square root of 2 and 2 minus i square root of 2. We can even get to answers that include complex numbers using the same easy steps without the need for applying the long formula. You only need to remember the short formulas minus b over 2a and c over a and a few simple and intuitive steps. And if you divided the equation by a to start off with, indicating the new coefficients by capital B and C, it becomes even easier. The solution is then obtained by squaring B over 2, subtracting C, and adding the square root of this to minus B over 2. This is a lot easier than remembering and applying the formula used during the last 1400 years, and the only steps that get more difficult as the complexity increases is squaring minus B over 2 and calculating the square root itself. In the next video, we will investigate how Professor Lowe landed on this method by basically making a small change to the order in which calculations are performed, and why this method is so much easier to apply.